Do you or your partner show contempt to each other during an argument? Research has shown that if contempt continuously shows up in your relationship, you will be headed for divorce. The good news is there are ways to spot contempt when it comes up and ways to overcome the toxic nature of contempt. These antidotes to contempt are backed up by research and have helped thousands of couples have better communication. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to spot contempt and teach you the antidotes to overcome it. Hello guys, I'm Tyler Rich. I'm a licensed marriage and family therapist located here in Las Vegas, Nevada. I specialize in marriage counseling and I created this weekly show called The Richer Marriage Show to help you grow a richer, more connected marriage. This video is part of a better communication series helping you learn to have better communication in your relationship. Make sure you check out the whole series and you hit the subscribe button so you never miss an upcoming video if you're catching this live. If you're seeing this, go to the playlist about better communication series. I'll put the link down in the bio or the description down below. So then that way you can see all the videos because they build on each other. So start with the first one. This is our third episode in the series. So. Now that that's kind of out of the way, let's dive into what this video is all about, which is what is contempt and why is it important? So contempt came from the research from Dr. John Gottman. He, the book that I have back here on my shelf, he was, he's been studying relationships for the last 30 years and he can predict with uncertainty, um, I think it's like 90% certainty if a couple will make it or not. And one of the things that he came up with was these things called the four horsemen of the relationship apocalypse. When these four behaviors are present, they will destroy a relationship. So one of the things that we have to do is learn to identify these four and then learn the antidotes to avoid them to the best of our ability. Doesn't mean we'll always be good at avoiding them, but we can, if we apply these antidotes when these things come up, we'll be able to work through them. So in this video, I'm going to talk about the second of the four, which is contempt. So one of the things I want you to think about is contempt is both a feeling and an action. It is when you're intending to psychologically abuse or damage your partner. This normally happens when you're feeling super emotional about something, and whatever was just said, you're reacting to. So with this contemptuous um, language, behavior, um, contempt causes you to forget all the positive things about your partner. You forget all the things that you love about your partner. It immediately brings down all the um, admiration that you have. And it's almost like the goodwill piggy bank totally gets emptied out when contempt starts to happen. So before I get into the behaviors of how contempt shows up, if you find videos like this helpful for your relationship, make sure you subscribe and hit the bell icon so you never miss a video um, because we'll, I, we'll have weekly videos about having a better relationship. So now that I said that, that's out of the way, let's look at the behaviors of contempt. So the first behavior of contempt includes insulting and name calling. This is usually when we, we, we've up the ante, right? In my last video, we talked about criticism, how we can be critical of someone, and that might be a little bit of a personal attack. This goes straight into hostile um, attack. This is when we, we make a statement like, you're only this type of person, you only do this, um, you're only a banker, you're only a stay-at-home mom. I bring, right? We're, we're putting a lot of judgment. Um, we could, insulting could include calling names, you know, actually cursing at each other, belittling each other, saying the thing that you know your partner will feel hurt by, um, you know you're overweight, you know you're not that attractive, anything that's really insulting, any type of name calling. Um, this is where you're using sacred information from the relationship against your partner. The second behavior that shows up when there's contempt is hostile humor. This is when you start making jokes, you're making fun of your partner. This is when you might use mockery. This is when you are intentionally um, making light of what your partner's saying. They're saying that you're just going to respond with a hostile joke. Of, oh, yeah, yeah, right, uh-huh, that's what's going to happen. So any type of mockery, any type of negative joke. Sometimes jokes can be helpful, and I'll do a future video about when jokes should be helpful in the repair attempt. But most of the time, jokes are not helpful at all. So the third way to spot contempt in your relationship in a behavior when it shows up is when 
I like to I like to think of it as the deadly smirk, right? The deadly laugh. That's when you know your partner's saying something and you lean back and you're just like, mm-hmm, yeah, mm-hmm. smirking, eye rolling, right? I have this little smirk and I'm just waiting for them to finish so I can like jump in and attack them or I get defensive, right? I see it a lot in my couples on my couch where one partner's talking to me and saying something and I can see as one partner's talking to me and being really vulnerable or open with something, the other partner is in such a a hard space that they're sitting here just rolling their eyes, you know, crossing your arms, leaning back, just, just total contempt. When our body language sends that message, contempt. It does not help. It makes our partner defensive. It will make them more critical. And these are things that you have to spot within yourself. And when you see it within your partner, you have to figure out ways to work through that. The last thing I like to add with contempt before you move into the antidotes is sarcasm. Sarcasm is full of contempt. That kind of goes with that hostile humor thing I mentioned in the second way to spot it. Sarcasm will be the death knell to your relationship. You have to be very cautious of being sarcastic. As somebody who would like to refer to myself as a recovering sarcastic person, it's really, really challenging to not be sarcastic in a really intense disagreement or intense conversation. Does sarcasm have a time and place? Yes. If you're feeling really connected and you're out having a good time, you're out on a date, you're doing something like that, sarcasm could be fun, but there's a higher likelihood that when you're sarcastic, your partner might not hear it the correct way. So you have to be really cautious with sarcasm. The good rule of thumb that I use for sarcasm is, is it about your partner? Don't use it. So if your sarcasm is about your partner, don't use it at all. If it's about a thing, if it's about an event, if it's about something else, go for it. Be sarcastic. But when it comes to the relationship with you and your partner, don't use sarcasm because it just breeds contempt. So that brings me to the question of the day. Are you guilty of contempt? And where does it show up if you do? Make sure you leave it in the comments down below so we can have a conversation about contempt because I'd love to answer any of your questions or kind of see how it shows up for you. So now let's move into the antidotes of how to stop contempt. So here's the step-by-step process for yourself first. You can't stop contempt in your partner, but you can stop it in yourself. This is how. So step one, go slow. If you're feeling a lot of emotional energy growing for you, you need to take some deep breaths. You need to slow down. You need to really feel what's going on. You need to understand why you're reacting the way you do. Why is it what your partner is saying is so upsetting to you? Slow down. When you can slow down and take some deep breaths, that will automatically help you kind of lower the intensity. And when you lower the intensity, you can start to figure out what you're feeling, which brings me to step two. Know what you're feeling. I always like to encourage my clients to ask the question, what is your feeling trying to tell you? We don't need to react because of our feelings. We don't need to just respond immediately because of what we're feeling. But we do want to be curious about what we're feeling. And if you're in an argument with your partner, it's really important to say, slow down, ask your, figure out what you're feeling, and try to figure out what it's telling you. Not necessarily why you're feeling the way you do, but what is it telling you? So know what you're feeling. What are you telling yourself about the story, about what your partner's saying? If you ask yourself why you're feeling what you're doing about this topic, why are you feeling this way about this topic, you'll be able to really try to understand what the underlying need is. When I'm frustrated that my partner is complaining, I'm feeling like I disappointed them. And I need to know that even though they're upset that I didn't follow through on something, that there's not a rupture in the relationship. So I have to understand my own reaction first before I can start to show up for my partner. If you're feeling contempt, there might be a good chance that your partner is being a little critical. And you have to ask yourself, if your partner is being critical, what is it that they're feeling? What is it that they're really trying to get at? They might be poking you. They might be shooting arrows at you. They might be jabbing you, right? They're coming at you really hard. But what is driving that? What is underneath what they're needing from you? And if you can start to ask yourself that question, it's a lot easier to see past what they're saying to what they're needing underneath it, right? When you get curious, when you lean in towards them, it usually brings down the hostility. And if you're kind of wondering about what criticism is, go on and check out my last video. I'll put the link down below um, or put it up here on the card. And in that video, I'll talk through what criticism is and what, how it shows up and ways to stop it in the moment, right? So again, 
criticism, contempt, and the next two videos in the series really all go together. So I'm going to refer to a lot of them throughout this series. The next antidote to contempt is ask yourself questions about what is going on with your partner. What are they trying to get across? What are they sharing with you? The more curious you get, the more you understand these moments, the easier it is to avoid contempt. When you're able to get curious and start to try to understand what's going on emotionally for your partner, it, you're going to have a more likely chance of having successful communication and feel more connected with your spouse. So that's all about contempt. Make sure that you like and subscribe so you never miss one of our Richer Marriage shows. And check out one of the videos on the screen from us. And then we'll also link to the playlist so you can watch this entire series from start to finish to have better relationship communication. And with that, thank you guys for watching. Bye.